Good morning, Lompoc. Good morning, Lompoc. It is so good to have you here on a Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. With, with some momentum on possibly getting a little bit back to some type <sighs> of normalcy, A little right? bit closer, a little bit closer. Yeah, I'm so it's, that's a good good news going into Memorial Weekend, right? Yeah, we're trying to figure out phase two, which yes. all of California is, is addressing. We're going to have the mayor, Mayor Janelle Osborne, on in just a few minutes yes. uh, to go through some of uh, the details and some steps uh, so we can try to figure some things out. Yes. Uh, but we wanted to to start by maybe uh, kind yeah. of reminding new viewers. We have some new viewers and yeah. people new to our show. So thank you so much for finding us. Yes. Um, just a quick synopsis on what Good Morning Lompoc is about. We started this in our in our shed in our backyard um, back in March. <laughs> and we have a small creative firm that mostly serves the wine industry here in town. And as things got slower, we mm -hmm. just decided we needed to do something so that we didn't lose our minds. So, yeah. we... so it started as sort of a maybe a little radio Radio show idea, yeah. maybe online, and it turned it. And as soon as Michelle got a hold of it, <laughs> it turned into a morning show. Yeah. So anyway, this is episode twenty-four. It is. So our goal with the show is to sh try to share more positive mm -hmm. news, um, but also some local updates as yeah. well. So that's why we, we're going to be chatting with the mayor, and then um, just some funny stuff to add a little bit yeah. of uh, levity to what's going on right now. And and uh, to in addition, some things that we try to avoid here yeah. is controversy and complaining and politics so there's plenty of other outlets for all those oh, things so many <laughs> but here we're trying we to, to those too but not we're today. trying to show how proud we are to live in Lompoc and how beautiful it is here and, and just remind people of what we do have are. despite all the challenges that are yeah. going on right now so um, thank you for joining us we hope yes. to keep this going even after shelter in place happens but we yes um, might change up the times a bit so more details on that we're, we're considering maybe uh, keeping this going when things are a little bit normal yeah so we'll see so today show will be chatting with the mayor like yes. Jeremy said mm -hmm. um, we'll also be chatting with uh, Shelby and Emily from Route 1 Farmers Route One Farmers Market. They have mm -hmm. a brand new program that's going to be launched that's going to really benefit our community here. Um, we'll also have Brad on. <laughs> um, Brad is Jeremy's brother. He cannot take two days off. <laughs> he can't. No. And he'll have a fun cocktail to prepare for Memorial Weekend this weekend. Bear with us. Yeah. And then we also have an awesome performance by... Yes. So I, this is so exciting. So stay tuned to the end. I always say that, but there's <laughs> a, we always play a great piece of local music. Uh, we want to celebrate local musicians. Um, they're struggling right now because restaurants, bars are all closed. Uh, so we want to give attention to uh, the local musicians. So St. Anne's Place, which doesn't play any, um, they don't play together anymore, yeah. but they're all um, related. So it's two brothers and a cousin anyway. So I'm sure they see They gave other. me a video from 2013. And again, Jacob Cole's talent, the whole band's talent. This is Lompoc music. It is so good. So good. I put our music up against your town if you're not from Lompoc. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, we love so your town too. St. Anne's Place, Jacob Cole, Sam Cole, and Joel Martin uh, rocking performance at the yeah. end. So, stay tuned so for that. a couple quick things come up before we get Janelle on. You had this, um, there's a... Yeah, just um, some quick local uh, updates. And if anyone knows that this has changed, please let me know. But on, uh, what is that, May 29th, I believe that's in the morning. So 8 to 9.30, uh, they're going to be doing a So a week from cruise. now, from 8 to... 8 to 9 30 in the morning yeah. a car cruise for 2020 graduates now it says Lompoc and Cabrillo but I think they're including uh, Maple High School uh, I think one other as well but anyway celebrating graduates uh, 2020 graduates that's on May 29th here in Lompoc on Ocean so yeah and then also um the food we want to mention yes uh, we, we mentioned outlet on earlier this yeah. week right mm -hmm. and they had a fun little update here yeah so uh in passing along the good news and paying it forward, I just wanted to share this. So um, this is Aaron Crocker from Grocery Outlet, who was on our show. And right behind him in the red shirt is Don Palmerville. Now, Don Palmerville has owned a gas station here. I believe it's on the corner of Isn't it College. No, Pine and I forget. Anyway, Palmerville uh, gas station. He paid for all of the propane to keep the forklift going at Grocery Outlet. So Aaron uh, wanted to sh give him a shout out. And then Aaron's going to Pay it forward by including some more donations for the food bank, which again is May 30th. So that's coming up here in just over a week. Food drive. Food drive for the food bank. Sorry. Yeah. Um, there are six drop off spots. Uh, if anyone can't make it there and you need us to come grab the food and deliver it, we will come and pick it up ourselves. Maybe we will. send Brad. 
Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, so keep that on your radar as well. Yes. What else we have? Um, so I think that's it before we get into our interview with Janelle. Okay. Um, we're going to give Janelle a call Let's here. Let's do it. Hang tight. Give us one second. All right. Technology. And um, Therese has an update. It's North and H. Yes. Thank you. North and H. That's Palmerville. So go say hi to Don Palmerville. Fill up your uh, tank there and uh, say hi. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. One second. Mm-hmm. Hang tight. Not yet. All right. Is that her? No, it's me. And... Where's it coming from? There we go. All right. Hey, <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, just about the time we get this all figured out. Perfect. Hey, it works. Can you hear me okay? I can. Right. And you? I, I can hear you perfectly. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we wanted to kind of touch base with you because we wanted to get a general update for what's happening in the city in terms of reopening. And then a couple just little specific things about little parts of our community that are curious about the process. So I will let you take it from here. We're going to try to get through this as quickly as we can and, um, and move on. So welcome. Good morning, as, they, as, as you are apt to say. Um, I think this week is full of good news. Mm -hmm. The state uh, took the county's application to keep the uh, prison numbers separate from the county numbers. The employees affected are still, of course, counted. Sure. And that means we can fully step into uh, stage two. And the reason that's exciting is I know a lot of people would like to um, get back out and dine in mm -hmm. rather than just get to go. And it is a holiday weekend. So um, there is a process that all restaurants and uh, other businesses that are allowed to open in stage two, such as retail shopping beyond curbside, must follow. Right. The county set up a web page. It's called recoverysbc.org. Mm -hmm. When you go there, there are several options. You can go right to what they call the RISE Guide, Reopening mm -hmm. a Safe um, Environment. Or you can click on Get Started, and that will take you to the page that has all the details. And it's really well laid out. It talks about what has to happen before a facility can reopen. It talks about the steps to take, so the checklist that you have to fill out as a business the attestation about uh, having done all those things mm -hmm. so that you can submit it online, and then the types of uh, signage that are available to print directly off the page once you have completed all those things and must post to reopen. Mm -hmm. And then any of the businesses that have already been open in stage one or early stage two are asked to also go through the process and submit their uh, plans and checklists by uh, June 5th. Mm -hmm. Below that, there is very specific links to each industry, so you can go right to your checklist. So if you're um, a rest dine-in restaurant or you're a communication service or pet grooming, the, the checklist's are already there. Mm -hmm. If your checklist isn't there, that means you aren't able to open yet, okay. and that means you're either in stage three or stage four, okay. which Sadly, we do not know when that will happen yet. Okay. There are uh, many rumors out there about what it might be, but again, we are dependent on the state's decision and the county being able to execute on the state's timeline. Okay. And then below all of that is, again, guidance and signage, and then what stage two um, questions you might have that have been generally asked, and you can find many of the answers on their fact sheet below that. So the county is doing as much as it can to provide as much information and make it as easy as possible 
to move to reopening with extreme guidelines such as how to wear face masks, what <clears throat> businesses must have face masks on to enter, what face ma uh, businesses must wear face masks to serve. Um, so it's again some new habits that I know might be difficult for some to want to agree with, mm -hmm. but I think are really important in order to help preserve the flattening of the curve that we've already gotten and yet let us get back to opening up businesses and figuring out what the new normal is for a while. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, one question on the, and I know there's not a perfect answer yet and it's uh, still to be discovered, but it, um, in terms of restaurants and kind of lopping tasting rooms or wineries in with this, um, it sounds like at the state level or at the ABC level, there's been some creative changes to allow the potential for outside dining, uh, curbside cocktails, et cetera. Santa Barbara is doing something uh, to try to get restaurants to, to kickstart and get some profit going. How are we focused or looking at the restaurant tasting room food well, truck I, thing I, here I, in Lompoc? Hold on, I think you're not saying it specifically. <laughs> so, well, so, oh, well okay, part of it is that a lot of the tasting rooms are teaming up with food trucks and caterers in order to be part of phase two. Sure. So looking specifically at um, some of the tasting rooms here in Lompoc that are in industrial areas, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to try to get a little bit creative so that they can team up with food trucks so that um, they could potentially reopen as part of phase two? It is absolutely something that city staff in the planning and building and fire department are looking at. We uh, know that tasting rooms alone are in stage three, but if they partner with a food service provider that can provide full service foods, mm -hmm. they are able to uh, provide alcohol along with those meals. So if a winery wants to reopen and partner with a food truck and have a system to show that a meal was purchased with that food truck and mm -hmm. therefore um, they can sell wine to them for having purchased that partner, that food partner's food, yeah. and sit outside in front of their tasting room and dine and have a bottle of wine or a glass of wine. The ABC has relaxed it, and the county is working with us. Uh, they're doing it and putting together a plan as well. You've seen City of Santa Barbara move their restaurants outdoors. Mm -hmm. So all of this is uh, adaptations to our zoning ordinance, and our staff is looking at how quickly can we make some adjustments that make it very easy so that there aren't any additional necessary permits or yep. process or appeals and uh, hopefully have a process out sometime next week or um, maybe even on the agenda for June 2nd. Great. Awesome. Okay, that's great news. And you wanted to ask about testing. Yeah. Um, so also in regards to testing right down the street from us, um, there's, you know, I know that they've been under occupancy. They could definitely take more people. So, you know, people who feel fine, should they still go get tested? You know, the, the requirements to get tested have been uh, reduced. It used to be if you thought you had any symptoms, this was an opportunity to get tested and not have to figure out where or if your doctor had those testings. Yeah. And this is a great opportunity that even if um, you don't have any symptoms, but you're curious if you're an asymptomatic carrier, that you can make an appointment and go in and get the test. Now, it tells you whether or not you have COVID-19, and it right. could tell you that you are asymptomatic, therefore you have it, but you're not showing any signs. So anyone who's curious or would like to know that they definitely should be wearing a mask if they want to keep going out because they're asymptomatic, maybe someone like myself, which I've scheduled to get mine done mm -hmm. um, because I am concerned that I'm asymptomatic and I'm carrying it. So I'm going to go find out. And even after I find out that I am either negative or positive and choose to still wear my mask because if I don't have it, if I'm negative, it means even after I take the test, I can still end up with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, another concern I've heard about is, is it safe to go if people are going yeah. in who are COVID-19? And I've toured the facility, it's very well organized. They practice social distancing. They wear all the appropriate medical gear to prevent being transmitters themselves. Yep. It is kept very, very clean. So it is a very safe environment to go and get your COVID-19 test done. And then the last part is, I, I, if you have been working since this began as an essential worker, um, either uh, in the agricultural industry or in one mm -hmm. of the grocery stores or for any of the essential services with the city or the county, 
you absolutely should take advantage of the fact that this test is free. Yep. If you have insurance, they will file against it first, but if the insurance denies it, it's still paid for. You will not see a bill um, or pay out of pocket yourself for this. So awesome. I think it's a really great opportunity for us to better understand um, the rate of infection in our community, and that's the reason for it. It's not to tell you that you have to go home or you have to stay home, but to find out if you are um, COVID-19 positive currently, mm -hmm. so you have it, but you're not showing any signs, or you have it and, and you've got one or two signs and you thought maybe it was just cold, yep. or you are negative and maybe want to consider all the precautions so that you don't get it. And then as soon as we have um, the serology test that is available as wide, I want to be able to be one of those areas where the serology test is set up. So I think us utilizing it well would be a sign that we would utilize a serology testing site. And my concern is if we don't access it and show that we really want to be tested, we might miss out on an opportunity when they do have the um, serology test, which for those of you that aren't aware, the serology tells you te test tells you if you've had it. Yeah. yeah, they just they just don't have enough of those yet for us to be taking. Them. Right, right. And I've taken the test, too. I took it last week. Um, the results came back about five days um, and they were negative. <laughs> um, but it doesn't for people asking if it hurts. It doesn't feel great. It you know, somebody's up in your nose with a stick. Um, but and so my eyes did start to water a little bit. You kind of feel like you have to but it sneeze. Was over but it I mean, as soon as he pulled that thing out of my nose, it felt fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know? discomfort for you know some important information so mm -hmm. i i highly recommend um everyone go to the public health sbc um, dot org page mm -hmm. and click on testing and then there's a website and a phone number and they do have bilingual support yep yep sounds great awesome um, i think that's i think that's all the questions we had anything else you need you want to add just the continued appreciation and patience for all of you in the community. I know this is very stressful and I know there are many discussions about um, whether to wear a face mask or not. I joined the uh, Respect, Protect, Wear Your Mask campaign that Hancock College started uh -huh. uh, across North County and I encourage you to go to their respectprotect.org webpage and get more information. Um, wearing a mask is not about protecting yourself. It's about us protecting those in our community that are vulnerable. It's about allowing us to get back to work with mm -hmm. some adaptation and behavior and reducing the spread of the infection so that we can maintain that flattened curve. So right. um, I just ask everyone to be considerate of each other and continue with your patience and kindness. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. We really appreciate your time, Janelle. And we're going to check back in with you in another week or two, or uh, anytime you have an update or need to get the word out, just please let us know and we'll uh, get you on. Will do. And thanks as always for a great show and keeping everybody um, in a positive mood. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we're trying. We're a lot of fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great day and we'll talk to you very soon. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Thank you to Mayor Janelle Osborne for that update. And a few of you have sent questions and obviously we'll do our best if we can, or it makes sense to, to ask those questions of the mayor in, in real time. Some of the questions w might be a little bit specific, so we'll try to forward those on and get specific yep, answers if absolutely. possible. So thanks for your understanding and patience with that. Yes. Um, there are so many questions. Sometimes we could probably do an hour show just on all of the details. But, Easily. Uh, Especially yeah, so with the way you patience. ask questions. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> just true. joking. All right. Where are we going next? Um, Ah, so I had a chance to talk to Shelby and Emily from Route 1 Farmers Market. They are now officially part of the Market Match program. So Route 1 Farmers Market has always offered EBT. Mm -hmm. um, they've been in business for about a year now. They just celebrated their anniversary. Should we, we take these out? I think we okay. can take those out. Um, they just cel celebrated their anniversary about a year, a couple weeks ago, one mm -hmm. year anniversary. And um, they're the only market that offers EBT, I believe, from San Luis Obispo to Solvang, Solvang yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and now they are part of Market Match. So Market Match, um, it's people who already use EBT. Mm -hmm. Now they can basically 
double their spending power. So they will give you, uh, they will match up to $10 at the farmer's market here. So if you have $10 in EBT dollars, they will match another 10. So that gives you $20 to spend at the local farmer's market. So, and I did want to say one thing, because yeah. I, I know some people are like, ah, EBT, I think that's just for poor people or <laughs> for welfare. Come on, let's let's be serious about this. Yeah. Um, the truth is EBT is going to be showing up more and more as there's a lot of people that are unemployed yeah. or have been furloughed. And part of the unemployment safety net will be the ability to purchase food. Yes. So again, uh, this already exists. The market match exists in grocery stores yeah. already. Uh, so now that to have this at a farmer's market where right. the local farmers, uh, the small folks can benefit from that yeah. is a really, really cool thing. So, and if you are on unemployment right now, you probably will already qualify for EBT. Mm -hmm. So if you did, were interested in that, um, you just go to this Calfre getcalfresh.org website and you could submit an application really quickly um, you know and and get approved so why not right right you know it's there, there's no harm in doing it so yeah. um, so check that out if, if you think you might qualify and I um, this I'll have more information on the market match and how to find um, maybe a market near you yeah. if, um, if if you don't live here in Lompoc so here yeah. is uh, Shelby and Emily enjoy so yeah, I just thought we could talk a little bit about market match and what that's going to mean. Um, Cause the way I understand it, it sounds like a great deal and it's gonna increase the spending power of people who are in need as well. Yes. yes. Yeah, we're really excited. It's a great program. It's offered in different ways all over the country and it's a program using federal dollars to match incentives that already exist. So for a uh, individual or family that already has the EBT benefit, they are able to use their EBT card to come shop at the market and we can match their dollar for dollar up to $10. So if they spend 10, we can actually give them 20 to spend in the market. Does that apply to anything at the market? Uh, all food goods, juice, honey, bread, vegetables. It's a great program we're super happy to have at Farmer's Markets because it is a program that already exists at, at major grocery stores. So yeah, it helps kind of level the playing field for the little guys like us. <laughs> we're the only market from San Luis Obispo City to solving that accepts EBT at all. And then now we'll be able to accept market match. Um, do either of you want to speak to anything in regards to how shopping at local, the farmer's market maybe helps the local farmers? The small farmers have a, have special challenges that face them in that um, in order to get into a bigger grocery store, you have to be able to keep up with that huge demand. Mm -hmm. um, so for a small farmer, it can be harder to, I mean, it, sometimes it's just impossible to meet that demand. Um, there are fewer platforms available to them. So farmers markets and farm stands um, are really the best place to access them and to be able to support them and keep doing what they're doing so that when we do have a need, they're still there and still growing for us. Right. Well, and I think that uh, from a nutrition standpoint, you're picking at the peak of ripeness versus um, you know, picking early and then allowing them to ripen in a truck with certain types of, I think, ripening agents, right, to, to make it look, so I think they'll pick tomatoes almost green, and then they'll artificially ripen them in the truck, mm -hmm. and then that's why you have a tomato that tastes like cardboard, but it's red, and it looks attractive, right? Yeah, there's been billions of dollars put into figuring out how to make produce last as long as possible on the shelf and look really pretty, but um Unfortunately, very little has been done about, you know, just keeping it good for us <laughs> and good environment. And, you know, the small farmers just do that because that's just what they do. Oftentimes yeah. at our market, it's uh, the produce that you're buying on Sunday sometimes could have even been harvested Sunday morning, um, but it's usually been within 24 hours. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about the curbside pickup that you're doing too at the market and how that all works? The market is still open in its more traditional um, setting, but we're offering a curbside pickup just outside the market with some basic vegetables that people can literally just drive up, they can pop their trunk and we put a bag of veggies in there. And it's $13 for the basic bag. You can add a loaf of bread for it to make it 20. You're, you can use your EBT dollars for the curbside pickup. Yes, good, yeah. good point, yeah. 
would they do that through Venmo, the EBT? They can pre-order through just the messenger and then we swipe their card at the market, but we'll hold it for them. Um, do either of you want to speak a little bit to why you revived this farmer's market or anything, anything about how that all started? So the Lompoc Valley Community Healthcare Organization or LVCHO and Healthy Lompoc Coalition we started this work out of our heel advisory cabinet. We identified this as an area that we wanted to pursue back in 2016. So we received some uh, initial funds in 2016 from the Santa Barbara Foundation, which turned into a three-year grant program to get market match EBT into our local farmers markets. Mm -hmm. So through this process, we decided that the best way to move forward was then to create a farmer's market that would be able to foster this food access piece. And Shelby was really wonderful in getting that going. And through that, we also received funding from CalFresh Healthy Living with the Santa Barbara Public Health Department. And so they've been funding our work now with the direct EBT outreach and CalFresh dollars. And I, I know you mentioned the previous market, and I do want to say Shout out to them for, for establishing the community around a farmer's market in the village Yeah, and gathered such a following that it was always uh, an obvious answer that it needed to continue in some fashion. Yeah, it really did. It set the platform for us moving forward. They had ABT and we were able then to get market match after that. And so yep. it, it really did lay the foundation. It's always been easy to feel like the market was the right choice because the community has been so receptive and so amazing and grateful. And I mean, I still get people saying thank you for bringing it back and it's been over a year. Awesome guys. Thank you so much yeah, to uh, Emily and, and Shelby, Shelby. Uh, for putting that information yes. on our plate and so, for the LVCHO for yep. being so involved in um, health and food here in Lompoc. So. so again, this is the Route 1 Farmer's Market that's on Sundays yes. and that goes from 11 to 2 p.m. 11 or 10 to 2? 10 to 2. 10 Sorry, to two. 10 yep. to 2. It used to be 11. Um, so 10 to 2 p.m. And that mm -hmm. is if you go to Vandenberg Village, so right when you get off that Constellation mm -hmm. Road and you turn right at the first stoplight, there's that um, bank on the right-hand side. You can't miss it. Yeah, so you see the gas station, turn right, maybe 100 feet, maybe, uh, yeah. and you're there. So, yeah. um, again, they're doing a great job there, bringing in lots of great vendors, and sometimes not just food, some crafts and yep. some um, some homemade items. And it is a really small cool. market, so they're mm -hmm. able to really spread out yeah. um, during this time so they can keep it very, very safe. Yeah. They have usually one person bagging. You just point to the veggies or mm -hmm. produce that you want, and then um, the other person will ring you up. So there's no contact between customers and yeah. produce on there. So they're, they're taking all the precautions. And then you can also do the curbside pick up where you can just pre-order a bag mm -hmm. of veggies you can either venmo um, right away the route one fm um, and then they'll get your order ready or you can just send them a message um, via facebook messenger especially if you mm -hmm. are using ebt you would send a message via facebook messenger and then they'll have mm -hmm. it ready for you and then um, ring your card when you're there so i know a few people go to walmart feel super cool when yep. they bring your groceries right out and they help put it in your car Imagine going to a farmer's market, just pulling up like a drive through and they put a bag of um, fresh grown veggies and maybe bread in your yep. car. Kind of awesome. And if you don't live in Lompoc, um, there might be a market match near you. Mm -hmm. So if you go online um, and you go to, sorry, theecologycenter.org forward slash FM finder, there are so many and you can filter by market match, EBT that and no really benefits. Cool. So that's, really awesome. um, that's super helpful. Yeah. The other cool thing that um, they are part of is Veggie Rescue. So um, at the end of every market, Veggie Rescue comes and any sort of produce that the no vendors waste. don't want to take home, mm -hmm. they will give to Veggie Rescue or there's also been people making donations so that they can actually purchase produce directly from the farmers and then donate that produce directly to Veggie Rescue and all all that produce stays local so it's really cool that's, it's just awesome they donated mm -hmm. uh, i think 2000 pounds of produce in their first year of business so far um just from the routland farmers wow. market so that's a ton yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dad. Okay. So our show is going to go a little bit past nine o'clock. So stay tuned. You don't have to go to work yet, do you? Okay. Don't stress. So we have a you, quick update from Brad. Yeah, Brad. On and the then Memorial Day weekend cocktails. And then St. Anne's Place to wrap up the show. Yes. It's going to rock your socks and get your weekend started on fire. So, so. here's Brad. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen and little children. Welcome to my favorite bartender, 
also known as Brad. Today, we're gonna take a slightly more serious tone with this cocktail, as we're gonna be uh, commemorating Memorial Day uh, over the weekend and on Monday. We're calling this drink today the Hometown Warrior. And the point being is I'm gonna challenge myself over the weekend to look up the list of those that have died in service that were from my hometown of Lompoc. My challenge to you is if you're from Lompoc, you can join me and just find one person that, uh, and read a little bit about them and learn about them and memorialize them. So this drink is gonna be based upon bourbon, American whiskey. We're gonna have a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit more of pomegranate juice, a little egg white, and we're gonna have a little sweetness from some strawberry simple syrup that we threw together. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take one shot of our whiskey. Any American whiskey will do. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. We're gonna add four tablespoons of pomegranate juice. So the pomegranate juice combined with the lemon juice gives you a nice balance of tartness with a little bit of bitterness. And we're gonna sweeten that up just a little bit with some strawberry simple syrup that we made. Very easy to make. You just chop up some strawberries, you can add some sugar and a little bit of water and simmer it over the stove and then strain it. I'm gonna add about a half ounce of my strawberry simple syrup. And let's not forget a very important ingredient, which is egg white. Egg white? Who does that? Well, the reason you do that, it's tasteless, it's odorless, but it gives a nice frothy texture to the cocktail. So it gives this nice smooth quality all the way through and it adds a little froth on top, which is just perfect because we're gonna put a little star to commemorate America right on top. So egg white in there. I don't use too much ice. You don't wanna water down the cocktail too much, but just a little bit. Let's shake it up. Okay. Ooh, that looks right to me. So we're gonna start pouring that in and you'll notice be a nice little froth right on top. And I'll make a little star right on the top. All right, so there we have it. Couple tips. Don't thank a living service member. That's for Veterans Day, don't forget. Number two, spend five, 10 minutes. Look up a fallen warrior from your hometown. If it's from Lompoc, it's pretty easy. Look up fallen warriors on Facebook. Besides that, have a great weekend with your family, and we'll see you on Monday for Monday's Memorial Day show. Jeremy and Michelle are gonna rock it, and they're gonna talk about some of the fallen. So we'll see you then. Thank you so much to Bran. Oh, he can be nice. He can. So, that, was very, that was very thoughtful. It was. Yeah. So tonight we will be doing a happy hour on our show. We'll be joined happy by hour. Norm and Kate of Flying Goat Cellars. Can we say it together? Flying Goat. So Flying Goat, <laughs> uh, they're Lompoc wine staples for many years. And Norm is one of the first people, Santa Barbara County, to become known for making incredible sparkling wines. I believe 2005 is when they started making yeah. sparkling wine. So. so that's going to be an awesome conversation. We're going to learn a lot. And then Kate, she's been so active over the years with the community here, the city of Lompoc, and, and helping us grow up. So it'll be a really, really fun conversation. Did you hear the guy I, behind yeah, us? Yeah, it sounds just like, started it his sounds Harley. like there's a rocket in our backyard. Harley Davidson, yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyways, we know this show is long. Thank you for so much for staying with it's us. It's not over. Um, not over we yet. We have St. Anne's Place tonight, yeah. right? Can you show that one fun yeah. slide? Um, Jacob. And Jacob Cole, who you know that we're big fans of, um, and we didn't do the overlay thing for it, but it's, oh, it's yeah. fine. So this is Jacob Cole at the age of 13 uh, giving a guitar lesson. Jacob Cole's not 13 anymore, but he is still giving guitar lessons. And when you see the video performance that we're about to play, you're gonna want a guitar lesson. Uh, maybe you. I think do I'm you gonna want have a guitar I think I'm gonna have to take a guitar lesson. So. Anyway, this is a throwback. St. Anne's Place, best band I think to ever come out of Lompoc. Yeah. I can't. I, just amazing. Um, thank you, Jacob Cole, for sending this over. Yeah. Everyone, have a great day, and we'll see you tonight at happy see hour. See you tonight, and enjoy your weekend. Your St. Anne's Place. <laughs>